Hey, what's going on? Welcome to this video. And today I'm joined by Patrick or Petrick or Boodle, whichever you prefer. And today we're going to do something a little different, which is build out a links page that I can share on social media that just has links to my YouTube channel, Instagram, website, that sort of thing. There's a bunch of services out there that will do something like this for you. Just give you a page with a couple of links on it. Uh, but I figured I'd build my own because it's really just a bit of HTML and CSS. And so this is just a casual live coding kind of video, different from my normal stuff, but I hope it's enjoyable and I hope it's educational. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is the design that I'll be coding out. I've just designed this in Figma and it's just a simple page with a couple links and icons and then a little profile down at the bottom. So here we are in the main Figma file and uh, let's open up the code editor and create the first file. So I just have an empty folder here for the project and I'll create a new file called index.html. And then I'm gonna type HTML colon five and then hit tab and that will create all this boilerplate HTML for me. I'll say links page or just links as the title for now. And I'll put a heading in here and let's test in the browser, make sure that it's running. Perfect. So we are just loading this on localhost because I have Apache running on my machine here. And the first thing we should do is create a style sheet. So I'll create a new file here. I'll call it styles.css. And then I will link it up here in the head tag. Actually, I'm gonna create a little more space here. So link rel style sheet, and then the path to that file will be styles.css because it's in the same directory. I just like to space these out a little bit because I'll be putting some uh, other things in here like Google fonts and a few other things. All right, let's write a few styles just to get things started. So I'll say body, background, black, just to start out. And let's see if this is loading the style sheet. Yes, it is. I'm gonna open the console here as well, just so that it forces the style sheets to reload because we have disable cache checked here. That will make any images or CSS or JavaScript files be forced to reload when you refresh the page. And we'll also see any errors here if files aren't able to be loaded. And I'll move this over to the side. All right, so we know our style sheet is loading. I'm going to add box sizing to every element on the page of a border box. And what this does is prevent the padding on elements from adding to the width of those elements. Because if you're setting an exact width of say 300 pixels wide, but then you have 50 pixels of padding, that element will be 350 pixels wide. And that can throw you off and that's rarely what I want to happen. So I always add box sizing border box to prevent that from happening. And actually I'm gonna say HTML and body elements should get a minimum height of 100 viewport height. So sometimes the HTML element or the body element won't be the full height of the page if there's not content to make it expand. Sometimes it'll just be up here if there's just a little bit of content. So this is just forcing the HTML and body tags to be the full height of the viewport. And I'll also remove any margin from the body here. All right, next let's go and write some HTML. I'll take this out of here. And I'm going to have one container, which is the background gradient. So if we look at the design, we have this gradient in the background from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. So instead of putting that on the body or HTML element, I'm going to put that on a div. And that's because I'm going to be using some blending modes. You see how these, um, these borders and backgrounds kind of overlay mix uh, blend mode into the background. For that to work in this particular scenario, I need the background to be on a parent element of these links. So I'm gonna create a div here with a class of background. And while I'm in here, I'll just create a few other things. So div.wrapper. So wrapper will be the container that holds all the content in this column here. So what we'll have some padding on the left and right. And finally, let's create an unordered list for the links. I'll give it a class name of links. And then we'll create a list item and then a link. So the first one is going to be desk setup. 
and I'll just copy this real quick five times and I'll fill in these YouTube, Instagram, Twitter portfolio. And I'm going to call portfolio website actually. We'll add the icons in later once we get some of this other stuff done. And that's all we need to do for that for now. So let's go and write some styles. So for the background, oops, div, uh, so dot background to get the class. We want to do that linear gradient, right? So let me go and get that from the design file. So this Figma file, if we just right click or we look at the uh, overall board here, the art board, we can see there's a linear gradient as a fill going from the top left to the bottom right. So I just want to copy this style, copy the CSS to get this gradient. So I think I have to copy the whole uh, the right click, copy, let me see, copy as CSS. This will probably give me way more than I need, but let's just paste it in here and see what we get. Okay, yeah, we got the styles for the whole design. We just want the gradient for the main container. Oh my god, this is a lot of stuff. Whoa. Okay, there it is. Linear gradient. That's this uh, blue, and then it goes to a purplish. So that's the one I want. So I'm going to copy this and get rid of everything else. And there we go. So let's save this and refresh. All right, that's not looking so nice. Let's zoom in a little bit, though, just so you can see what's going on a little better. Um, yeah, I'll zoom in a bunch of times there. Okay, that's pretty ugly, but let's get this styled up now. So one thing that's happening right now is because we use an unordered list, it has default margin and padding on it, and it has these bullets, of course, because it's an unordered list. So let's remove all that default styling. So I'm going to say links, which is our unordered list, margin, zero, padding, zero, and then list style type, none. That'll get rid of those bullets. Okay, that's looking better. And so inside of the unordered list, we have a list item and then a link. So let's style those up. Links, li, margin, zero. Uh, I think it's 18 pixels on the bottom. We can double check the design here. So if you hover, if you select an item in Figma, and then you hover over another one, and then you hold down option on Mac OS, probably alt on Windows, it'll tell you how many pixels are in between those two items. So 18. So 18 pixels, margin bottom, perfect. List items probably have some padding by default. So I'll zero that out. And they are 60 pixels tall. So I'm just going to set that as a fixed height. And let's look at the font information. So Roboto, 18 pixel font size and white. So let's do that here. We'll say font size, 18 pixels. I'm going to do line height of 18 as well, because it's never going to be two lines and color white. So let's take a look at that. All right, they're still not white. That's because the links inside of the list items need to have white as well. So let's style them up. Links A for the link tag. We'll say color should inherit from the parent. This is the parent right here. So that'll be white. Uh, font size should inherit as well. And line height. Okay, that's looking a little better. Let's get that Roboto font in here, or Roboto font. So we're going to go to fonts.google.com and just search for Roboto. There it is right here. So I'm going to select just the styles that I want. I don't need the super thin one. So I'm just going to do regular, regular italic. And then maybe this bold one. I don't think I use this, but we'll just snag this anyway. Let's actually look at what I use. So this is actually, this is bold. Yep. And then this is regular. 
and this is black. So we need the three variants actually. So we have regular, we have bold, and we just need black. And there it is. So select and select black italic as well. So overall we have six styles. So I'm going to copy this link to include the font in my project. I'll put it up in the head tag here. I'll do it after my style sheet. And then to use it, we just have to use font family Roboto. So I'll close that out and go back to here and put that in right at the top. Sweet. We now have that font loaded in here, which looks nicer. Let's get rid of the underline here on the links. So text decoration. None. All right, that's better. So this looks like more than, um, what, 18 pixel font size. That's because I'm super zoomed in. Um, I just want to do that so that you guys can see what's going on here. All right, what's next? We see that these are within a container here, right? So this is, um, let's see, these are 374 wide. We'll make them flexible, but we roughly want them to be in a narrow column because this is mostly for use on mobile. So we're going to use that wrapper div right here to make a narrow column. So let's go back to the styles and we'll add dot wrapper here. And our overall design file here is 414 wide. That's a pretty standardish mobile starting point. So we'll just say max width of 414. And there's a little bit of padding on the edges as well, 20 pixels of padding. And again, I'm just selecting an element, going to the background here and then holding option to see what the margins are there. So 20 pixels on the left and right. So padding, zero for the top and bottom, 20 for the left and right. And in order to center this, well, let's look at it first. Okay, so it's probably right about here. Um, but we can't see that, right? So let's give it a background color just for a moment to see what's going on. Okay, yeah, there it is. So this is 414-ish, but we need it to be centered. It's off to the side now. So what we're going to do is margin zero for the top and bottom, and then auto for the left and right. And if it's a block element, that will center it. All right, perfect. So let's get rid of that hideous green. And let's see what else we have to do here. So we have this border and then we have a background. So if we look at the border, we can see it is, let's double click into this, two pixels wide and it's a white border. It has an overlay on it, as you can see here. If we don't have that, you'd see it would be a pure white border. So we'll worry about that blend mode later, but for now we need a two pixel border and it has a radius as well. Let's look at that of eight pixels. So this is what makes it rounded corners. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to add it to the link tag here. Border two pixels, solid white, and then border radius, eight pixels for all four corners. And let's look at, well, let's refresh that. Okay, not looking great, but we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, let's look at the background. So we'll double click this. We see the background has a fill right? And that is white, but it's 25% opacity. So we can do that here by saying background RGBA 255, 255, 255 will be white. And then one will be 100% opacity, just pure white, but 0.5 will be 50% opacity. So we want 25%. So we'll do 0 0.25 for 25%. And there we go. That filled in there. All right, let's get these looking a bit more like they should, which is spanning the full width and having this uh, spacing between the text. So on the main links UL element, I'm going to do display flex and then flex direction column. That will make all the list items flow downwards. And then for the list item themselves, we're also going to do display flex. And then flex direction column. And then for the link tag inside the list item, we're just going to say height 100% 
of the parent. So let's take a look at that. Okay, that's looking a bit better. And if we zoom out, that's what it will look like. So let's get this text centered vertically and horizontally now. So on the main list item tag, let's do text align center. That fixes that piece. So to vertically center the text, let's make this a tag a flex item as well. So display flex. And then we're going to say flex direction column as well. And then we want to justify the content um, center. So that will make the link tag itself a column flex box, and then it will move its content to the center, I hope. Yes, okay, perfect. So that's looking a lot closer to the design, which is nice. But you can see our background gradient here isn't going all the way down to the bottom of the page, of the bottom of the viewport here, right? This is all black still. So let's fix that. So the gradient is on the background div here. So let's say min height is 100% viewport height, just like the body and HTML have on them. And that worked, perfect. All right, let's add a hover state to these just so the background gets a little brighter when you hover on it. So we'll do that on the A tag. So we'll say links a hover background same thing rgba 255 255 255 and we'll say 0.35 so we'll just increase it by 10 percent increase the background white color opacity by 10 percent and there's that let's add a little bit of a transition to it so it's not just popping on and off there so we'll do transition background, that's the property that we want to animate, 0.2s ease. The 0.2s will be 200 milliseconds, which is one fifth of a second. And ease controls how quickly the animation starts and how quickly or slowly it fades off. So let's refresh. And there we go. We have a nice little transition on the background color there. All right. So the next thing I want to do is add a blend mode so that these aren't just white and pale white, we want them to actually blend into the background color a bit like this. And this in Figma is using an overlay blend mode. If we don't have that again, it just looks like that, right? So we need to add an overlay blend mode in CSS. So we will do that here on the A tag, because this is the element that has the border and the background color. And those are the two properties that we want to blend into the background. So we'll say mix blend mode overlay. And there we go. We're getting that effect that we want. See the border is brighter on the first one, but then it gets darker as we go down because it's looking through to the gradient and the gradient in the background gets darker as it gets down towards the bottom of the page. But it also applied the blend mode to the text, which is not what we want because we want our text to stay nice and bright. So this is where we get a little fancy and have to find a workaround because we're applying blend mode overlay to the whole link tag. And because the text is part of the link tag, it's getting that effect as well. I wish CSS allowed you to just apply it to the border and the background. There is a background blend mode, but that works more with images and background colors, and it doesn't affect the border at all. So we can't use that. So one thing we could do is put the text on the LI itself. This won't look right because it will be floating above the element. But we can use a little CSS trickery to make this work. So let me write some stuff here and I'll explain it as I go. So I'll put this back in here. We'll leave this text here because for accessibility and search engines, we want this text to technically be on the link tag. But we'll add an attribute up on the LI here. So we'll say data text equals. And we'll put the titles up here. I'm going to do this for each one. And, and then we'll use a little CSS magic to make it all work. All right. So if we refresh the page, nothing's changed because we can't see those data attributes yet, but we're going to go into the CSS now. And for the text on the actual link tag, which would be this text here, 
Let's just make it transparent so we can't see it. So transparent and we'll refresh. Cool. So that disappeared. Now let's go to the link element and we're going to add a pseudo element to the li element. So we'll do links li before, which is a pseudo element. And then we'll just do position absolute. We'll make the width 100% width of the li itself and the height 100% of the li. And we can set a content property. And if we just put something in here, like the letter X, let's see what happens. Cool. So it's adding this text before the content of the element. So if we look here, this is the li and this is the content of that element. So it's adding X before the content, but it's just floating off to the side at the moment. So let's fix that. But it's just floating off to the side at the moment. And that's because we need to set position relative on the list items so that content won't flow outside of it when we do absolute. So all we have to do is do position relative and that should fix it. Perfect. So we're running into the same problem here that we had before where this isn't vertically centered. So let's do the exact same solution on this pseudo element as we did on the link itself, which is setting display flex, justify content and flex direction. So I'll just copy these here and get rid of the mixed blend mode one and test this out. Perfect. So our text now appears to be part of the link, but it's actually part of the li element. And it's obviously not the right text, right? So let's fix that. Instead of putting X here, we can get an attribute from this li element. So if we look at the li, it has an attribute of data text. So we can say, instead of a string, we want to get an attribute. And then you just put the name of the attribute here. And look at that, it is able to pull that attribute content into the pseudo element and display it. And because the text is no longer part of the actual link tag itself, it doesn't get that blend mode applied to it. So it's nice and bright, just like we want it. All right, so we're making pretty good progress now, but let's check in on Petrick and see what he's up to. Where are you, Petrick? Pete Moss. What's up, dude? All right, he's having a good old nap now. We'll leave him be. Back to work. All right, what's next now? Let's go back to the design. We might as well export these images now, these icons. So I'll double click this and they all should be able to be SVGs. So I'll go down to export and I'll do SVG. And I'll just do that for each one here. All right, cool. So if I look at these here, there's all five of them. Perfect. And let me drag them all into the project directory. So I'll create a new folder here for images. Call it images. And I'll drag these five into it. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to fix the naming on them. So YouTube, website, Twitter, Instagram. And this one was, actually, this one was desk setup. This one was website. Okay, great. Let's add these images to the HTML. So we're going to do it inside the link. Yeah, let's try that first. Uh, it might not work with the blend mode we have, but let's try it out. So images slash desk setup dot P, uh, SVG. And we'll just say desk setup, or this is a laptop icon. And let's see what happens. All right, four or four not found. So let's see what's going on there. I missed a period. Sorry if you saw that and we're screaming at the screen. Okay, perfect. There it is there. I think it is getting blended into the background though. Yeah, so it is getting the opacity blend mode, which we don't want. So we have to get this icon outside of the A tag, just like we did with the text. So let's see what some options might be for that. Okay, so I just stopped and took a look at some options. And unfortunately, it looks like I'm gonna have to undo some of the stuff I just did and take another approach altogether, which is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. So instead of getting the text in, um, we're just going to do everything one way, which is create a span inside each LI. And then we can put the image in there and we can also put the text in there as well. So I'll just wrap this in a span as well. And we're going to call this 
link content. And then here we'll put the label again, or the title. And we just have to do this for each one. So instead of having the data attribute being pulled in via a pseudo element, we're just going to create a span and that's going to replace the whole pseudo element thing. And then we'll just absolutely position this over the link, just like we were doing with this pseudo element. So sorry about that. I didn't really plan this video out. It's just kind of me doing this as I go. So that's a little unfortunate. So this is going to be youtube.svg and then the text will be YouTube. And we'll do the same for the other three down here. And then we'll be on our way. So Twitter, get rid of this. Twitter.svg. Twitter text. And then the same for Instagram. Instagram.svg. Instagram. And then the last one. Website. Website.svg, website.txt. I'll just fix these uh, all text here as well. Website, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and refresh our page and see what we have. All right, great. So we're back at this point where we have the content loaded above the actual links. Now we just have to absolutely position them over the link so it looks like it's within the link. So let's go to our styles and we're going to get rid of this after thing that we just started writing and we're going to take the content from the before here. And what we want to do is just change this. So we called it link content, right? So instead of the pseudo element, we'll say link content. We don't need this content property anymore, but we should be able to keep everything else. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, cool. That's pretty close. Now we just have to fix the positioning of the icons and the text. So instead of flex direction column, let's do row, which is the default actually. So that should be fine. Perfect. Now let's set these icons to be to have a maximum width so they don't get so large. So if we look at the design file, 26 pixels, 26, 26. Yeah, they're all 26 pixels wide. So we can just say for images within this, have a max width of 26 pixels. Actually, let's just set the width to 26 pixels. Okay, that's closer. So let's get these uh, vertically aligned together. Let's experiment in here just to uh, speed things up. So link content, flex direction row, justify content center. Yes, we want that piece. So I think we want align items center. Yes, cool. So let's go and put that in our code here. And then we need a little margin uh, between the icon and the text. So let's look at the design file. Double click this and see it's 12 pixels. And they should all be about that, yes. Okay, cool. So we'll say for the image, margin right, 12 pixels. Let's set this to display. Actually, we don't need to do this because it's in a flex container. I was gonna do display inline block, um, but it's in a flex container, so I don't think we need that. Nope, perfect. All right, so this is looking pretty close. If we look at the design here, it looks fairly similar. Uh, what's the font weight on these? Bold. And what do we have here? I think we have normal. So let's fix that. Font size, line height, would be font weight. So bold was the, um, yeah, I, I guess we can just do bold there. All right, so this has anti-aliasing on it which makes it a little thinner. So if we look at this and we do um, WebKit font smoothing into the alias, we can see there's a subtle difference. Just makes it a little lighter, a little smoother. So we're going to apply that as well. So we'll do that right here. WebKit font smoothing into alias. 
There's a version of this for Firefox as well, which is Moz OS X font smoothing. And it takes uh, auto or grayscale. So grayscale is the one we want for the anti-aliasing. And just as a heads up, this only works on Mac OS, but I like it. It makes the text look a little nicer. So let's refresh here. Cool, that's looking pretty close to the design. So sometimes what I'll do to make sure my code is matching my design closely is I'll make sure I'm zoomed at 100% and then I'll take a screenshot and I just did control command shift four on Mac OS here. Then I'll take a screenshot and save it to my clipboard and then I'll go into the Figma design file or Photoshop or sketch and I'll paste in my screenshot and then I'll make it 50% opacity by pressing the number five or 20%, 90%, whatever you want, any of the one through zero numbers will change the opacity. And then I'll just drag it over the element and zoom in a little bit and I'll move it around and I'll see how close I am. And you see it is actually pretty accurate. So if I make it 100% and then I just show and hide it, you'll see that it exactly matches the design file in terms of spacing, font size, border, all of that. So I just like to do this once in a while to make sure that I'm sticking to the design file very accurately. All right, so let's get this links text here into the page next. And this is no longer text actually, so let's export it as an SVG. But before we do that, let's look at the blend mode here. It's on hard light. So if we go to normal, all right, it's not too different. So with it selected, let's go down to export and choose SVG. All right. Let's get that into the project directory. And I'm going to call it links.svg. So let's add it to the HTML here. So I think we're going to put it in the wrapper container here. Let's look at the design again. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit wider than the wrapper because we have the wrapper at this width and then it has a little padding. So we'll probably have to use some negative margin to bump it out on the left and right a little, but we'll definitely put it inside that container. So we'll do image and we'll just give it a class name of links um, image. Sure, why not? And that's in the images directory and it's called links.svg. We'll give it some alt text of links and let's see what this looks like. All right, pretty close. Let's just uh, get it bumped out a little bit on the left side here. And let's actually see what the width is. So it's 394, which means, yeah, it's 10 pixels away from the edge. And this is 20. So let's just bump it out to the left by 10. So we'll grab the class name here and we'll go into our CSS. And let's do this above the links UL element. And we'll say width is 100%, actually calc, 100% plus 20 pixels because we want it to be 100% column width plus 10 on either side. So it's just a little bit larger. And then we'll say margin and then zero for the top and bottom for now at least, and then minus 10 on the left and right. Let's see how this looks. Cool, that looks pretty close. Let's uh, look at spacing for the top and bottom now. It should be eight pixels away from the top and the list below should be 20 pixels down. So we'll add eight pixels of margin to the top and 20 to the bottom. So eight for the top and 20 for the bottom. So let's check this out. All right, looking pretty good. Let's take another screenshot and paste it in and see how it compares, how it matches up. So, it's almost there. It's probably close enough. Um, I'm just a bit particular with getting things as close as possible. So we see that the size of the image, if we just make this non-transparent and then we just remove it and show it, it's exactly the right width um, and size, but it's not exactly positioned correctly. So, well, at least the list below is a little different. So one, two, so let's see how far off it is. One, two, three, four. So it needs to be four pixels higher. The list needs to be four pixels higher. And so sometimes you'll see it'll say 20 pixels margin below 
in the design file, but in the real world, once it's in a browser, that isn't accurate. And that's probably because of default margins and paddings and line heights on elements. So if we zoom in and we look at this image here, you see that there's a gap between it and the list below, right? So let's see if that's on the list. That's not on the list. That's on the actual image itself. And that's probably because of a line height thing. So if we were to do line height zero, nope, it's actually because of the display mode, I think. So we'll say display block. Okay, so that fixed that, except we get a little um, space on the top. So that's because we're using a margin and display block and it pushes the whole thing away from the top, which isn't quite what we want. So let's see what happens if we do zero margin top and we do padding top instead. Okay, cool. So that's what we're going to do. The image is display block and then we use padding on the top so it doesn't separate the whole background from the top of the page. Zero and then padding the top, eight pixels. And we'll just do display block to get rid of that extra little gap at the bottom that images have because it's an inline element, I guess is what it is, right? So it's an inline element. So it gets some extra little spacing uh, on the bottom of the images. So let's refresh here and we'll do another screenshot and see how it's looking when compared. So we'll get this line right up at the top. And I think, yeah, that's um, exactly properly spaced and sized, which is great. So one thing is the color is a little different and that's because this has a blend mode of hard light. So let's apply that in CSS as well. Let's do it in here just to start with so we can quickly see what it's gonna look like. So we'll do mix, blend mode, hard light. All right, did that do anything? Yeah, it's very subtle, but it did make it a little more faint and the color seems to bleed through a little bit more. I'm not sure which one I prefer. I kind of prefer without the blend mode at all, but I'll do the blend mode because that's what I have in the design and I can always change it later. So I'll add this on right here, mix blend mode, hard light. And now we are looking pretty close. So let's take a look at this at a much smaller screen size. So we'll just go narrower. And there you go, that works all the way down to super narrow. This is well narrower than most phones or any phone probably at the moment. And if we go super wide, it just floats in the middle, which is kind of what I want because this is really just for mobile use anyway. All right, let's zoom back in. And the next thing to do is the bottom, the little profile section here. So let's just create the markup for this first which will be a container, which we can uh, fix to the bottom of the page. And then we have an image, we have a name and some text. So I'll just write the HTML first and then we can style it up. So I'll go down to the bottom and this should be within the wrapper div. So I'll do it right after the end of the list. I'll say div.profile. All right, so first thing is we have an image. So we'll do image. I'll give it a class name of uh, avatar. And let's export that image here. So when I export it from the design file, I want to make sure I'm not including the border radius on the image itself, because if later on, I don't want the border radius, I don't want it to be a circle. I can't change that if it's baked into the image, but I can always add border radius in CSS. So I'll export it as a square image. And this has a blend mode of luminosity. Um, so I'm just going to put this back to normal. So it's a normal image. And then we'll apply that blend mode in CSS. This would be a lot easier if we just exported everything with the blend modes baked into them. But then you can't change that after the fact. It's nice anytime you can to have the content be just pure content in an unstyled form. So just a normal color photograph. And then you use CSS to apply all the styling. Um, so that you have flexibility down the road if you want to change things. Or even if you just want to swap this image out for a different image, you don't have to open up Photoshop or Figma, apply the style, export the photo. You can just drag any photo in there and it will get that styling. So let's go ahead and export this. I'm going to export as a JPEG because it's a photograph. And I'll do 2x just so it's a little bit of a higher resolution and then we'll shrink it down. It'll be nice and sharp. 
All right, so that's exported. I'm just going to undo these modifications here. And I'll get the image into the project directory. So I'm going to call it avatar.jpg. And we'll link to that here. Avatar.jpg. I'll put my name in as the alt text. All right, what else do we have in here? So we have a name or a title, and then we have some paragraph text. So I'm going to do H2 for the name, and then a paragraph tag for the text. And let's take a look at this. Cool. So all the content's there. We just have to style it up now. This image is um, really quite a low resolution, so I'll probably replace this with something better. But let's work with this for now. So if we look at this profile section, we see we have a border on the top. So let's look at that first. So we have a stroke. Yes, that's it right there. So it's a white stroke that is blending through to the background. So let's do that first. We'll style up this profile div. And we'll do this at the very bottom because it comes last in the HTML. And we'll say border, top, one pixel, solid, white. And we have a separate background gradient on this container, actually. So it's just a gray color, actually, which is blending through to the gradient in the background. So that's interesting. I forgot I did that. So that's cool. So we'll do C0, C0, C0 as the background color. And we have some padding on this. So this is 40 pixels from the top, 40 pixels from the bottom, and uh, 57 from either side, but that's not really 57 because as it gets smaller, we don't want that much padding. So we can say a maximum width of 300 for this container and then 40 pixels on the top and bottom. Let's start with that. Padding 40 pixels on the top bottom, zero on the left and right for now. And we'll give it a maximum width of 300 pixels. Let's take a look. All right, there it is. And we want this to be centered. So let's use text align center. All right, looking pretty good. And we also want the overall container to be centered because it's offset here. So let's do margin zero and then auto on the left and right because divs are block level elements. So they will be moved to the center with auto and auto on the left and right. All right, let's look at the positioning in the design file again here. So ideally, this stays floated to the bottom of the viewport. But then again, if the viewport is super short, we don't want it covering up the links. So I'm not quite sure how I want to approach that yet. Uh, one other thing is if the viewport is super wide, we want this border top and the background color to expand the whole width of the viewport. So right now it's in the wrapper div, which is making it stay inside here. So that's not ideal. Um, let me see how we can fix that. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is instead of having the wrapper be a fixed column in the middle, I'm going to apply that narrower styling to just the list itself and just the image itself so that our container down at the bottom can be full width. So let's rework a few things to make that work. So let's look at the wrapper container here. So margin zero auto, we no longer need that. Uh, max width of four, 414, we're going to put that on a different element. And we're going to put the padding on a different element as well. So let's do that. So for links, we want the links to be a maximum width of 414. That's the actual list of links themselves. So let's save this and see what happens. Okay, so that moves that way. That sort of is expected. I wonder if on display flex elements, we could do margin zero auto. Let's try that out. Yes, we can. Cool. So there it is centered again, which is great. I think it might be a little wider than it originally was. Let's see here. Yep, 414. That's because we don't have the padding on the inside of it anymore. So let's go ahead and add that. So padding left and right will be 20 pixels. So that as we get smaller, if we don't have that padding, it'll be right up against the edge. But let's refresh. Now it's in set a little bit by 20 pixels, which is nice. Let's fix the image next, which is now always 100% viewport width, uh, which we don't want anymore. So if the links are 414, 
as a maximum width. We want the image to be 414 plus 10 pixels wider on either side, right? So let's say 434. So let me remove this left and right margin for a moment and see what we get. Okay, yeah, that's not quite what we want. So let's do auto on the left and right. Okay, pretty good. So it's still a little off though. And actually that's because we have padding. So we don't need this 434. We just need 414. Actually, let's just look at the design and see what that was. So 374 because the overall thing's 414. This is 394. All right, so let's just say 394. Maximum width. Perfect. And let's just make sure it's still properly spaced out. So I'll paste this over here again. And yep, that looks pretty good. Perfect, actually. Okay, great. So that's those two things taken care of. Let's go small again and make sure that that's still all good. Hmm, I do want the links to always have a little spacing as well when you go really small, like they have here. So again, that's 10 pixels. So I think we can just apply some padding to that. So for the image, so we're going to do padding 8 for the top, 10 for the left and right, 0 for the bottom. And we'll get rid of that padding top there. Let's see what that looks like. All right, it's a little smaller now because we have padding on the inside of it. It shrinks the overall width of it. So we have to put this back up at 414. All right, there we go. A lot of back and forth there, but we now have that perfect. So if we go super narrow... It's always spaced away from the edge just a little bit. Actually, no, look at the right side. Hmm. What's up with that? Oh yeah, we're setting a fixed width. So we need to set a maximum width of um, 100%. Let's see. Yes, perfect. So maximum width, 100% of the viewport. Um, but if we can, let it be a fixed 414 wide. All right, so that's that done. That looks pretty good. Now let's sort this bottom piece out, the profile. So let's look at that again here. So instead of setting a maximum width on it, let's let that go all the way and refresh and see what we get. Okay, cool. That's a start. Now we just want to make sure the content in the middle is only 300 pixels at its widest. So let's add an inner div for that profile content and we'll wrap everything in that and let's go ahead and put this down here margin zero auto again so it's always centered and then max width 300 pixels all right cool so 300 pixels there for the content itself but the overall container can go all the way to the edges of the viewport we still have to fix it to the bottom, but we'll fix that in a moment. Let's get this uh, blend mode thing worked out here. So let's experiment over here. We'll say mix blend mode and we'll choose overlay. All right, so once again, we're running into the same problem we did with the links, which is it applies it to everything, including the content inside of it, which we don't want. Uh, we can't use background blend mode because we can't blend with other elements backgrounds. This is for blending multiple properties of this back, this element's background itself. So if we had a background image and a background color, we could blend those two together using some sort of blend mode. But because this gradient is on a parent parent element, um, it won't apply to that. So we need to use mixed blend mode, um, but that applies to the content. So. Um, let's try to get around this using a very similar method here, which is putting the background and the content in separate elements and then using some absolute positioning to figure it out. So in this case, instead of doing the content in a separate element and loading that or absolutely positioning that, let's do the background and the border as a separate element. So let's go to the markup here. And within this profile div, let's create a new div called um, profile background. And this won't have any content. We can actually put it below the profile content container here. 
And let's go ahead and remove the background color and border from the profile. Save and see what we have. Okay, back to that. So now we'll add this in background, profile background. So the background color is going to be C0, C0, C0. And the border top is going to be one pixel solid white. Okay, so at the moment, this doesn't have any height or width, so we won't see anything. Well, I guess we'll just see the border, right? But what we want to do is absolutely position it to the top left, make it full width and full height, and it will be absolutely positioned, filling the entire height and width of its parent container, which is the overall profile div here, right? So it should fill this whole space, and then we have a background. That's not really a background, but it looks like one. So let's try that out. So position absolute, top zero, left zero. Well, let's do right zero and then bottom zero. That way, that way we don't have to set a height and width. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Okay, cool. So it's taking over the entire viewport, which is not what we want, but this is a simple fix once again. That's because it doesn't know when we're doing position absolute, top left, bottom right, all zero. It's not, it doesn't know that we want it to stay within its parent container. So all we have to do to make it realize that's what we want to do is set a position relative on the profile div. So we'll go up here and we'll do position relative. And there you go, that fixed it. So it's also on top of the content, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll just set a Z index on the content to be a little higher. So we'll say 10. I think we need a position relative on this as well. Okay, great. Now let's try to apply the blend mode to this background container. Profile background, mix blend mode overlay. Perfect, there we go, that's what we want. So let's check the design and make sure it was indeed overlay and not some other blend mode. Yep, overlay, perfect. Okay, so that is pretty good. Let's go ahead and... Actually, it looks a little brighter than it should in the design. Let's see what's going on there. Ah, so the layer has 60% opacity set on it as well. So let's do that as well. So for the background, we can just use the opacity property because it's all its own element. There's no content inside of it. So 0 0.5 or 6 for 60% opacity. Whoa, that doesn't look right. Ah, okay, that's because I set the mixed blend mode in the inspector here, but not in the actual code. So let's add that in here. Mixed blend mode overlay with the opacity 60%. Cool, that looks pretty good. I think this is further down in the darker section, so it's a little bit darker there as well, whereas this is still a bit higher up. So we'll leave that for now, that's pretty good. Let's make this text white and style it properly. So the name should be 16 pixels with a 24 line height and we're using black. So let's go down here and we're gonna say H2, font size 16, line height was it 24, yes. And then font weight, uh, I think 900 is the black. We can look at our Google Fonts embed here or uh, tag here. Yep, 900 is the black weight. And let's zero out the margin for now. Actually, let's see what the margin on the bottom is. Four. So zero is for the top, zero for the left and right, and four for the bottom. And the color should be white. So let's take a look at that. Cool, looks pretty good. And then the text down here is 1624, so same font size and line height. So let's actually set that on the overall body. 16 pixels, line height 24, and then color white. That shouldn't mess up our links. Let's take a look. Nope, perfect. Okay, so there's some paragraph top margin on this here, which we can see by hovering on it there. So let's get rid of that margin. We're only gonna have one paragraph down there, so I think let's just strip all the margin from the p tag. 
Okay, cool. Let's resize this image and set the border radius so it's a circle. So in the design, it should be 66 pixels wide. So we'll go back to, actually, we'll look at what we have here. So image, avatar, class of avatar. So let's get this and go down here. And we will do display block to start with. And then width, 66 pixels, height, 66 pixels. It should be a perfect square image for this to work. Otherwise, it will get skewed. Um, so actually, let's just remove the height. So width of 66, because it's a square, the height will also be 66. Let's take a look at this. All right. It's a block element now, so it needs to be centered. So we can do margin zero auto. And let's add a border radius. So to make square elements full circles, we can do a border radius of 50%. And that will add a 50% width radius on each corner, which means a full circle. All right, looking good there. Let's see what we have for margin here. So 18 pixels margin on the bottom. So we'll go and adjust that here. And that's looking pretty close. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out and take a screenshot. And overlay it here. So the image is perfectly lined up, perfectly sized, as you can see when I move the screenshot around. And the same goes for the title and the paragraph. And it looks like the height of the overall container, if we look here, this is where the container ends. It is perfectly lined up with the bottom. So this is perfect. If we go back and forth, you can see everything is perfectly placed. So if we look at the image here, it has its own blend mode, which is luminosity. So let's go ahead and apply that and see what happens. So avatar mix blend mode luminosity. Save that and refresh. Nothing happens. Hmm. Probably because the background of this element doesn't have a background color or the, the parent of this image doesn't have a background color. That's interesting. Let's see. Luminosity. Let's try a few others just to see if anything does anything. Doesn't seem to be affecting it at all. Okay. Interesting. Let's set a background color on the content container and see if that changes anything. Yes, that most certainly does. Okay. So because the background color or the background of the parent, there is no background color. Um, it doesn't know what to blend the image with. So that's a bit of a problem here. Let's see what we can do to solve that. Let's look in Figma and see what's going on here because it is working in Figma. Obviously, this isn't a web browser rendering engine in Figma, right? So it's going to be a little different. So the layer has a, the, the overall wrapper for these, this content has a pass-through blend mode. Yes, so I think we have to somehow get that onto the content container. So I don't think CSS has a pass through. Let's see here. Mix blend mode, pass, nope. Let's see what options we have here. Hmm, color dodge, not quite. Oh, what's this, luminosity. Oh, that actually will work because the text is white, so it really doesn't do a whole lot to it. That might be good enough for our purposes. Luminosity. Let's see how this looks in comparison. I'm just going to take another screenshot, paste it over here, and then show and hide to see what the difference is here. Yeah, so it doesn't have as much of that purpley color. I think this is fine for now. I'm just going to leave it. I might play with it more later, but um, this is close enough for this uh, video right now. So I don't want to waste too much time fiddling with this. So let's move on. All right. So the last thing to do is fix this to the bottom of the page. So one option is just to do position absolute and then bottom zero, left 
zero and then width 100%. That works unless the viewport is shorter. So if we move this down to the bottom, or actually if we go into mobile mode here, If you are on a very short phone, this will happen. Or if someone flips the phone the other way, that's not going to work. We have to find another way. So another option might be to make a container that all this content up here is wrapped in and say that this container always has to be a minimum height of 100% viewport height, which would push our container here all the way down to the bottom. So if we say this container here with this content is 100% viewport height minus the height of the bottom profile container, then this would always be down at the very bottom. And then it would still be able to be pushed further down if this content here got taller. So let's do that. Let's see how that works. So we want to wrap all of this content in a min height container. So we want the links image at the top and then the list of links all to be in this container. And let's give this an outline so we can see what we're working with. I'll put it up here next to the wrapper container. Outline one pixel solid red. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that doesn't work because it's the outlines going outside. So let's do 10. Nope, that won't work. So let's do border one pixel solid red. Okay, so this is our container with the content in it. We want this container to always be 100% viewport height minus a certain amount, which is this container's height. So if this container changes height, this doesn't work, but I'm always going to have two lines because this page won't change much. So for this particular use case, I can do it. Um, if you have someone entering this content in a CMS and it's subject to change, they could add four lines, five lines, make this a large image, then that could change and break and it wouldn't, wouldn't work. But in my case, this is always going to be the same height. So I can do this particular solution. So let's find out what the height of this element is. It is 240 pixels. Okay, so let's set this min height here to be min height. I'll just show you first what 100% viewport height looks like. So as you can see, it fills the entire viewport and then this content's pushed to the bottom. So what if we did this minus this height right here? Let's take a look. Calc, so we'll use CSS as a calc function, which is super handy. I remember the days before this existed and things were a lot more painful. If you think CSS is hard now, oh my God, it was much worse. We didn't even have border radius. You couldn't make rounded corners. How crazy is that? We had, we, had, we used to have to do like weird little images like rounded corner PNGs that you'd have to float to the top and bottom corners of a container to make it look like it had rounded corners. It was disastrous. And uh, the browser support was just so varied as well. Um, anyway, CSS is actually legitimately awesome these days. So let's do this and see what happens. Okay, cool. There's no scroll bar. So it's not too tall and pushing this down too far. It's always exactly the right height. And then if our content gets larger or if we're on a very small, uh, now a short phone or, or mobile device, this will still be below the content. It will never overlap. So let's go back to this Let's see, uh, iPhone 6, 7, 8 plus. That's what it will look like there. And then if we flip to the landscape mode, you can scroll right past and it will be down at the bottom. So this is perfect. Again, if this content would vary a lot and could get a lot taller or shorter, this approach wouldn't be the best, but because it's always gonna be the same height, it's a great solution. So one thing I do want to do is add a little bit more spacing just between uh, these elements here. So it's not so tight. Um, this is really just a preference at this point, but let's see here. I might just do another 20 pixels just to space it a little bit out from the list of links there. So I'll get rid of, well, I'll leave that border for now. 
on the profile. We're actually on the uh, list of links. Let's just do 20 pixel margin on the bottom. All right, cool. Just to space that out just a little bit. And let's get rid of the border. And there we go. So, super short, super tall, super wide, super narrow. No, no device is going to be this small, realistically. Um, so really, I think 320 is, I think, about the minimum uh, that you're going to find uh, on most devices. Most devices are 375 and, and wider at this point. But there we have it. There is my links page. So I'm going to upload this to lukepeters.tech, which at the moment is just a page that says tech. Uh, so I'm going to upload this to here because then on Instagram, I can just put lukepeters.tech as the link in my bio, right? So if I go to Instagram, instead of having just my YouTube link here, I can add the link to my new page. And then here, if I do a new Instagram post and I say, hey, the uh, video link is in the description, people can just go to my links page and I could have a new link at the very top, which is my most recent video, or if it's a particular product that I'm looking at or reviewing, or any particular place I wanna send people, I can just go ahead and add another item to my list of links here, and then people will go here and they'll find everything they need. So that's the whole purpose of building out this page, and I thought I'd just record it to share the process of me building it out and solving the problems I come across in real time because most of my videos, when I do them, I edit out all of the mistakes and I plan a lot more ahead of time. So it looks like I know exactly what I'm doing as I'm going along. Whereas this is actual development. You try something, it doesn't work. You go down the path of one approach and then you realize that's not gonna work because of some very particular scenario. So you have to back out and you have to find another solution. That's what I do. That's what everyone does when they're developing. So this is a more real world look at building websites. All right, that's all for this video. I hope that was educational or at least interesting. I do have some videos coming on Flask and Postgres. So those take a little bit more preparation, but they are in the works. So if you're looking forward to that sort of thing, it's coming. Uh, and if you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more front end web development stuff, make sure to let me know down in the comments because I really like doing this front end stuff, but I also really like the back end. So I want to do a bunch of it, but let me know what you're interested in most and particular topics you want to see me cover. That's really helpful because then I can narrow down my list of ideas. I have too many ideas and not enough time. So let me know and I'll see you in the next video.